Hi and welcome to the Gate Legion of Doom. This is a fantasy movie review and I'll be having a look at 1982's The Sorceress, also known as Devil's Advocate. So this is a Roger Corman production and actually features a lot of footage that will be later seen in his other kind of fantasy film productions like uh, Deathstalker and Wizards of the Lost Kingdom, things like that. So this film stars Lee and Lynette Harris, who are real life twin sisters, and they are Mira and Mara in the in the actual film, the characters. And we see kind of from a prologue that they that they they're kind of born and their kind of evil sorcerer father wants to sacrifice the firstborn of them uh, to basically bring about this kind of demon lord and whatnot and take over the world. Wherever he's stopped by a, a kind of good wizard who rescues the children and kind of puts them in in the care of a kind of local sort of like farmer family. And he orders them basically to be raised as boys because the evil sorcerer basically will sort of be looking for sort of two girls. So they cut the 20 years later and we have our kind of two, two sort of heroes or heroines really. Uh, these two girls, Mira and Mara, but they, at this point in time they actually think they're, they're kind of boys, which is possibly one of the most silly things in this whole, this whole film. And they're kind of, their village is attacked by the kind of sorcerers, men and whatnot. And they basically go on a quest to try and get revenge on their kind of adopted family and for the death of their real mother by the hands of the sorcerer. They join forces with a, uh, a kind of barbarian, a handsome barbarian, a, a dwarf and his kind of fawn sort of goatman friend. Um, between the five of them, they try and sort of thwart the forces of evil, which include uh, an army of zombie men some kind of randy monkey people and obviously a whole bunch of evil warriors and the actual sorcerer himself. So this this film basically is your kind of stereotypical proper fanboy wish fulfillment fantasy. You've got, you know, you've got warriors, you've got evil sort of sorcerers and demons and things like that. You've got lots of bucks and beauties that are always clothes are falling up and whatnot. But this actually has a bit of a misogynistic feel to it. There's, there's actually a fair amount of kind of like rape and things like that and so sort of suggested uh, weird sort of sexual things, including, as I say, a kind of this little monkey creature who wants to have sex with the other sister, the kind of the younger sister. And even the zombies try and get on a bit of the action and they kind of try and uh, try and rape a bunch of virgins. So it, there's, there's quite a lot of, of suggested, I mean, it's not graphic on screen as such, but when you kind of think about what they're actually showing you here, it's actually, it's actually a little, little bit disturbing when you actually th th think of it. Uh, however, the rest of the film is kind of more of a kind of Durang Daru kind of typical sort of action fantasy film that really isn't a, a particularly adult sort of themed film. So it's kind of a strange mix. And it's seen a few times in, in these kind of fantasy films, but this one does seem to be a particularly, uh, you know, sexual based one. Obviously, I guess because our two sort of female leads are obviously women. Uh, kind of one, I guess one of the other criticisms that I'll say about this movie is that our, our heroes are maybe these two women, but they seem to be constantly having to get rescued by the kind of the male sort of members of the sort of the, the party, and ultimately they tend to be massively proactive. And the kind of I guess the one thing they do do is this kind of spell, which brings about this kind of dragon uh, line thing that you probably have seen in other films and that's been used in a variety of different uh, movies. That it really it was almost like a smart bomb that you sort of get in video games, it's kind of just basically sort of ultimately sort of turn the tide of battle. Now this is actually quite a lot of fun, despite the, my um, a few misgivings with this film, this film is actually a lot of fun. It's one of those really kind of campy, over the top sort of action romps that you're going to kind of, you really get a bit of fun of, especially if you're a kind of a bit of a retro B-movie fan and you kind of like your kind of classic, very, very cheesy and campy fantasy movies. You know, that, but for, the, for it's obviously very limited budget, I do think it, it does try to do some, uh, you know, some interesting things. Like I said, there's some, some interesting effects there. Obviously on the cheaper side, and this film, as I say, is made in, in 82, so it's obviously getting on a bit now. Never, never there, so I still think it's, it's, it's quite fun to watch by today's standards. Although if you're, you know, a younger person watching this, you'll be picking it apart in no time. However, I do have to say, obviously, some people may find a little bit of a problem with kind of some of the... Um, 
the sort of the, the sexual overtone that this movie does have. In 1982, I think it probably would have maybe flown under the radar a little bit with the kind of things that it suggested in here. But these days, you kind of look at it as a little bit more sort of critically and that sort of thing. Nevertheless, I, like I said, I, I, I enjoyed it. And this is actually one of my preferred films when you kind of look at these sort of low budget fantasy films because I think it does have, you know, a little bit of that kind of cheesy can be fun. So I'm actually going to give this one a 7 out of 10. I actually quite liked it. What did you think of it? Leave me a comment. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.